Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of France in Focus, dedicated entirely to a subject close to the heart of the majority of people here in France, chocolate. Well, more than 80% of French people confess to eating at least some chocolate every single week. And while that might sound like a lot, it's a lot less than the British or the Germans. Well, in a moment, we're going to be taking you around this chocolate factory for a little tour. And who knows, we might even be allowed to have a nibble. But before we do that, let's start by crunching a few numbers for you. Without a doubt, the French are passionate about chocolate. Whether it's milk, white, or dark chocolate, 83% of French people eat it at least once a week. The most popular are chocolate bars. There are also other types like chocolate spread. The French like bitter dark chocolate, which represents 30% of sales, much higher than the European average of 5%. In 2016, 381,900 tons of chocolate were eaten in France. That's nearly 7 kilograms per person. Consumption is particularly high at Christmas, about one and a half kilograms per household. Sounds like a lot, but the French are far from the highest consumers in Europe, ranking seventh. The number one prize goes to Germany, with each German citizen consuming around 12 kilograms of chocolate a year. Germany is also the number one exporter of chocolate in Europe. 540,000 tons were sold in 2016, thanks mostly to the sale of chocolate bars. The Netherlands comes in a distant second, followed by Belgium, France, and Switzerland. Well, to find out more now about how chocolates are made, who better to ask than Nicolas Cloiseau, who is the head chef here at the Maison du Chocolat in Paris. Let me into a little secret, Nicolas. How do you actually make chocolate? What makes us unique here at La Maison du Chocolat is that we make ganache with different types of chocolate. That way the tasting experience is more sequential. You get different tastes at the beginning, in the middle and at the end. So first we use milk chocolate which is smooth and balanced. Then we add dark chocolate which has notes of dried fruit. It makes the ganache taste very chocolatey. And then finally we add what I call the chocolatier salt. It's pure cocoa, so it's very strong. It brings a bit of bitterness and sharpness. You stir it, making small circles. The signature flavor here is this blend of different cocos. If I wanted to make a cinnamon ganache, then I would have to use slightly spicier cocos. Where are we now with the, with the production? We have this mixture of cream and chocolate. It's very creamy. Very shiny. To make sure the ganache melts in your mouth, we add some butter. What's new, Nicola, in the world of chocolate making? Are you doing things now that when you started as a chocolatier, you never imagined you'd be doing, or ingredients that you're using that no one was using back then? I have a new collection that will be released in May. What I've tried to do is to make chocolate with more of a wellness approach. That is, I've tried to keep the whole gourmet addictive aspect of chocolate while exclusively using vegetable fats. So I made a ganache with fruit juice, chocolate and hazelnut oil. At last, uh, healthy chocolates. That's, a, that's a, good, uh, a good development for us. <laughs> OK, so you're now going to pour that into uh, a tray to make a whole load of chocolates for us. Just before you do that, can I try a little bit? Of course, go ahead. Mm. Yummy. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us, Nicolas Croiseau, the head chef here at the Maison du Chocolat in Paris. We're going to take a look now at how chocolates are produced on the factory floor. Well, as we've been saying, France's love affair with chocolate is no secret, and this country has produced some of the finest chocolatiers in the world, like Nicolas. But when it comes to selling the finished product, some markets are proving harder to crack than others. Frédéric Madeleine does his morning ritual. 
declaring his shop a part of France. La France à l'honneur. He's in Tokyo, where the French flag increases brand value. He offers chocolate in the shape of camembert cheese and apples, specialties of his native Normandy. Come on in, I'll show you how we make chocolate toffee apples. His signature apple-shaped chocolate is the best-selling product here. First, we cover the mold with a very thin coating of red cacao butter. Then we add white chocolate. We've been making these for a few years now. They sell like hotcakes. Chocolate is a sizable market in Japan, worth 6 billion euros a year. High-end sweets are three times more expensive than in France, but people are ready to spend and eager to try new things. We made eclairs with Chinese calendar animals. People like cute things here. Manufacturers have also been keen to develop locally adapted chocolate products with flavors such as green tea. Japan is now the biggest exporter of cocoa products in Asia. But next door in China, it's a different story. I eat chocolate once or twice a month, but I don't really like it. I only eat what my friends give me as presents. Global confectionery firms have been there for decades, but chocolate has yet to win over Chinese consumers. Per capita consumption was only 200 grams or two chocolate bars in 2014, though that's set to double by 2020, according to one estimate. One French chocolatier is looking to develop a market for artisanal chocolate. Welcome to the Chocolate Academy, uh, Shanghai. He runs a school to train professionals to work with chocolate à la française. When they master the techniques, consumers will follow. I think training chefs is really important. It's not an easy task when something that is so ubiquitous in the West is still foreign to most Chinese. In Europe, we grow up with chocolate. There's usually a good chocolate shop or bakery on every street corner. Here you have to make them discover the taste. The three-day course costs 700 euros, offering a wide range of traditional techniques. I learned, for example, how to make decorations or different shapes with chocolate. It will help me offer better products to clients. It may be some time before these people can master the art of chocolate making, but they're eager to invest, eyeing China's growing urban middle class. Humans have been eating chocolate for thousands of years, and as we've been seeing, it's all been turned into something of an art form. So it's only right and proper that Paris should have its own chocolate museum, and that's where we are right now. And to talk to us more, I'm joined here by uh, Valentine Thibert, who is a chocolate expert and also a member of the Club Croqueur de Chocolat, uh, which translates roughly as the Chocolate Nibblers Club. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Um, first of all, I imagine your job involves eating a lot of chocolate, doesn't it? Yes, a lot of chocolate. Uh, I am a happy woman, you know, because uh, uh, many people think it's uh, really it's uh, the, the beautiful, uh, the most beautiful uh, job in, la in life, yes. And the reputation of uh, French chocolate seems to be getting stronger in the world. It used to be the case that the Swiss and the Belgians dominated the chocolate market. Now the French are very significant in that market. Why do you think that is? Uh, in fact, it's happened uh, about uh, 20 years ago uh, because Sylvie Douce and François Genté had the idea to develop a Salon du Chocolat, French Salon du Chocolat in Paris, and uh, it has a big, big success. In fact, uh, at the beginning, nobody believed in that uh, exhibition. But finally, chocolate makers were just involved in making uh, best and best, and uh, Cocoa producers were coming and they exchanged with the chocolate makers and there were a lot of foreigners coming too and a lot of communication, TV, radio. Uh, so all people uh, became uh, pas passionate with uh, chocolate in France and in the world. As we can see here, there's lots of different types of chocolate, lots of different flavors. Uh, what are some of the new trends in the chocolate market right now? Uh, for new trends. In fact, um, I think that uh, in France we explore for ganache everything uh, which can be explored. Uh, at the beginning there were only ganache with uh, uh, almonds and uh, hazelnuts, you know. 
and uh, also with cocoa, and that's all. But um, with the Salon du Chocolat, we explore tasters that like uh, vegetable, uh, like spices, like flowers, and so on. And finally, uh, there was a, a return to the cradle of cacao, uh, to those flavors which are native in, uh, in uh, the beans. And now the, the, the trend is to, uh, to heat chocolate from the bar um, just for the pleasure to, to find all those external, external flavors, uh, just like a, a great wine, really, that's, that's it. Um, Valentine, I read quite a lot of reports that suggest that actually eating chocolate is good for you. Uh, please tell me that's true. Yes, in fact, it has been known forever. Uh, even uh, Mexican people, old Mexican people know that. And uh, there were a lot of drinks which were just for health. Uh, for instance, in Mexico, um, the, the women uh, which has just uh, have a, a baby, uh, they, they got, they've got a, a special drink uh, to recover from, uh, from the birth, for example. But um, it's, we know it's good for the brands, especially for the brands, because there are a lot of molecules uh, which are like drugs, and it makes you happy. You are just like a god, you know, you just feel so great. Okay, well, that's good news. Thank yeah. you very much indeed uh, for sharing that and everything else with us. Uh, Valentin Tibert, chocolate expert, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you, thank you. <laughs> Well, that's it for this week's edition of France in Focus. We leave you here at the Musée du Chocolat, the chocolate museum in the heart of Paris. Thanks for watching. See you again soon here on France 24.